Um, hello, my name is Stella Riachika. Today I'm going to demonstrate to you how to investigate for internal fungal infection in grains and seeds. Fungi, that is yeasts and molds, contribute to post harvest losses over grains and seeds. Here we have a variety of seeds and grains. I do have corn, or what we usually call popcorn. We have granuts, or what some people call peanut. I have millet seeds, I have beans, and I also have maize, what some people also call corn. Uh, the reagents that we are going to use are not many. This is actually a very simple uh, test. We do have absolute ethanol here, what we call concentrated ethanol. I have sterile water. Okay, you can use distilled water, it's okay. Then I also have 10% hypochlorite, or commercially what we know as jig. Uh, what I also have here are plates of culture media. We are going to use a fungal growth medium that is potato dextrous agar that has been acidified with 1% lactic acid. So the agar is already on the plate, so I am going to work with pre-powered plates. So I'll demonstrate with the corn and maybe I'll also use the beans. So we pour a few seeds into the beaker. They could be 10 to 20 seeds and I'm going to cover them with the 10% hypochlorite. I'll leave them soaked in the hypochlorite for about a minute, okay? So in the meantime, I could work on the beans, okay? I'll also put a few beans. I'm going to cover them with the hypochlorite solution, also for about a minute, okay? So, as we wait for the minute to elapse, I have my sterile water here. After a minute, I am going to pour off the hypochlorite. So the reason I put the hypochlorite here first, I want to disinfect the outside part of the seeds. I want to remove any fungi that may be on the surface of the seeds, such that whatever grows will be coming from the internal part of the seed or the grain. So I pour off the hypochlorite, and I'm going to rinse off the hypochlorite with my sterile water. Okay. You rinse twice to remove any traces of the hypochlorite. Okay. So that is done. We pour off the hypochlorite that we put in the bins. Wash it off with sterile water. Our aim here is to disinfect the surface of the seeds, just in case we have any fungi on the surface of the seeds. Okay, so having done that, I get a pair of forceps and I sterilize it. So I have dipped it in absolute ethanol and quickly pass it over the flame. This helps to disinfect my forceps such that if I have any fungi growing, they are coming from the internal parts of the seed. So we are going to put our seeds on the surface of the agar. We are going to put five seeds. So I'll put one in the center, and then I'll put the rest on the side. Okay, as you notice, I don't want to expose my plate too much. Okay. So since I'm going to work on another sample, I'm going to sterilize this again. Okay. So, and the seeds that I'm picking are those that are visibly okay. They should not have any signs of insect uh, bites. They should not have any blemishes. They should appear as sound as possible because usually we may think that seeds are okay just by looking at them physically but they may have the fungal infection internally so i'm only picking or working with seeds that are physically sound that look sound physically okay so having done that you you do the same for all these uh, grains and seeds and then you do that in duplicate so i'll have to do this again and also do this again. So I have two plates of each of these. Okay. 
Okay, so having uh, put our seeds on the agar uh, and in duplicate, remember we do this in duplicate, we are carefully going to carry the plates to the incubator. So incubation can be done at 30 degrees for 72 hours, or you can do it at room temperature for five days. What we are uh, investigating is if we have any internal mold infection. So within three to five days, if there are any molds in the internal surfaces of our seeds and grains, they will be seen on growing on the surface of the agar. So after this step, we're going to the incubator. So after three days of incubation at uh, 30 degrees, like I mentioned, uh, the molds uh, should have grown if they were present, and that's what we are going to check and see. Um, so. We'll carefully remove them from the incubator and we'll go and check for any mold growth. Um, after three days at 30 degrees in the incubator, we can now take a look at our results. Um, what we see here, we do have molds on the different grains, the molds that we consider those that are growing on the grain or that are surrounding the grain. The first thing that we do is to calculate percentage infection. So for instance, from here, if we look at plate A, where we put our granites, we see that all the five seeds have molds, okay? So we'll say five out of the five that we plated actually show uh, fungal infection. So that will be five out of five times 100, which is 100%. When we look at the duplicate plate, we also have five out of five seeds that are infected with the fungi. So we're going to get the average. So it will be 100 plus 100 out of two. So we have 100% infection here. In contrast, when we look at the millet, we do have uh, just three out of five uh, infected. Uh, and then, so that will be three out of five times 100, which is 60%. Yes, and then here we have two out of five, which is 40%. So we'll get the average of 40 and 60, and we'll report that as the percentage infection. So you do the, the same for the rest of the plates or the greens that we have. What I also want to quickly point out here are the variety or diversity of molds that have uh, manifested themselves on our plates. Uh, dominant, I'm seeing this black mold, which is most likely Aspergillus niger. Uh, this is the black mold that we are seeing here. The other, other mold that is of uh, very, uh, that's very critical of serious food safety concern is the Aspergillus flavors. Uh, presumptively, I th uh, this mold here on this seed and this seed here, it, it presents itself at times as a light green or a brown coloration. So presumptively, this is Aspergillus flavors. This two is also Aspergillus flavors. The black one I said most likely Aspergillus niger. And then we do have the white mold also, which may presumptively be Muca or Fusarium. And then I have seen what is most likely to be Penicillium. It's that dull green mold we see in there. So the fact that we do have molds showing up or growing on our seeds, and yet we used seeds that were physically sound to us, it means that the internal parts of these seeds and grains were actually already infected by fungi. So just looking at a seed and it looks nice, it doesn't have any uh, hole created by an insect, it is not uh, damaged in any way, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is free from the fungi. Um, those are the modes that I can quickly point out for us or for you. Um, what this means to us uh, in conclusion is that much as seeds may appear 
physically sound, we cannot conclude that they are actually safe for consumption, especially when it comes to the to presence of aspergillus uh, flowers or even fusarium or any other molds that we know produce mycotoxins. So it's important that the post-harvest handling uh, practices uh, either prevent or reduce the infection of seeds and grains with fungi.